Hey guys, my name is Kay, and welcome back to Always Remember Me. I know it's been a very long time since I've tried to play this game, but I guess I hadn't really been feeling inspired to do it. If I can remember correctly, we were trying to get the Aaron ending, but we're just going to have to see where my choices end up. As you can see, there is this green arrow that points towards my home. You live with your Aunt Gwenda and your cat, Nina. I was released from the hospital in the morning and came right home. When I walked inside, I was greeted with a soft meow when my cat, Nina, brushed up against my leg. Hi, Nina. Did you miss me? I smiled and reached down to pet her affectionately though I couldn't help but remember how Aaron would always fuss over her. Nina was a great judge of character, and she adored Aaron, even before he started bringing treats for her all the time. Aaron not always loved cats so much. He loved big cats and little cats like you, but you were always his favorite kitty. Nina cuddled my fingers affectionately when I knelt down to pick her up. But, Aaron has probably forgotten about you, too. The sadness I had been trying to keep out of the front of my mind returned as I pulled my cat into an embrace and sighed. I had slept very poorly and the fatigue from the crash hadn't worn off. I lost my parents in a car accident, and now it looks like I'm going to lose the man I love to one as well. I sat in the living room with Nina on my lap when Gwenda came in to comfort me. Oh, Amy, what happened? I briefly tell her about the accident. She was overjoyed to know that I was alright, and that I had hardly been hurt. Oh, thank God you're okay. But why didn't you call me? The doctor said I was alright. And I didn't want you to worry about me. I had been staying with my Aunt Gwenda for several years. Since my parents passed away when I was still young, Gwenda had taken care of me ever since. She is a kind woman, and I greatly appreciated how caring she had always been to me. However, her pension wasn't enough to fully pay for my college tuition, which is why I took the part-time job at the ice cream parlor. Um, you can now make your first choice. Several icons will pop up showing all the possible actions in this location. On each icon, you'll see a brief description and the effects of the game. Each choice consumes at least one turn of game time. Some actions are available only during certain periods of the day. For example, Aunt Gwenda goes to bed very early, so you won't find her hanging around at late hours. It's now noon, so a good thing to do could be to eat something, or you can just relax and read a book. Um... Awesome. Yum yum. I prepared a quick meal and the f food was really delicious. Um. Uh, yes. Played with Nina and then rested from the couch for with her on my chest while watching TV. I was so relaxed I fell asleep for hours. Amy. I've prepared your favorite cake. Thanks, Gwenda, but I like to stay alone for a while and rest, okay? I didn't sleep very well at the hospital. I had too much on my mind. That's fine. Get some rest. You can eat a piece of cake tomorrow morning before going to work. Good night, Gwenda. I went to my bedroom with Nina in my arms and sat down 
at the desk. I picked up a notebook and decided to try and get my feelings under control in the most familiar way I knew, writing them down. I picked up a pen and started writing a poem. A gentle touch, the warmth of your embrace, the passion of your kiss, precious times that felt ever so divine. I thought that they would never leave, but even though I can't reach you anymore, I can't open my eyes to find you there. I'll always have my memories. Though they are not as warm as the hands that always made me feel so safe, I know they will never disappear as you now have. My beloved, my heart is forever yours, even if you're lost, beyond where my trembling voice can reach you. Even if your memories fade or disappear into the darkness, I'll never forget the precious times when we face the world together. My beloved, for today, for tomorrow, for the days that may never return, never forget the words we once exchanged. I love you. When I awoke that morning, I knew that I had to go to the ice cream parlor. It was Sunday, and I had a long shift to attend to. I considered calling out, knowing that they would understand if I explained the situation, but decided that it would be best to go anyway. Otherwise, everyone would start to worry about me. I had no doubt that news of the accident was already traveling quickly. Gossip seemed to get around in town really fast. It says, now, during summer, you work in this ice cream parlor to pay for your studies. I got ready and arrived at the shop 15 minutes before the start of my shift. I hadn't wanted to dwell at home, though as soon as I walked in, I knew I was too early. It was still early morning, and there were only a few customers around. I was surprised to catch sight of a familiar face seated at one of the tables, apparently taking a break from work. Hey, Amy. Are you alright? I couldn't help but notice the genuine worry on his expression when he saw the bruises on my arms and legs. I appreciated his concern. Good morning, Lawrence. I'm doing okay. Are you sure? Those bruises look really painful. Yes, I'm sure. They really aren't as bad as they look. Really? I don't know if I could work with bruises like that big. You're a strong woman. Heh. I can hardly feel them. Thanks, though. How did it happen? You weren't in any trouble, are you? Well... I got in a car accident. What? When was that? How did it happen? I felt a little bad for worrying him, but the tenderness in his eyes made me feel slightly better. It was nice to know that there were people who cared. I decided to explain to him what had happened, since there was little secret to it. I was on a motorcycle with Aaron protected me when we got into the crash. That's why I'm not very badly hurt. It wasn't his fault. They think the other driver was drunk. That's terrible. How's Aaron? I haven't heard anything about him recently. Actually, Aaron suffered a head injury. He has amnesia now. I'm sorry to hear that. How bad is it? Will he recover? They think he will. Luckily, it isn't too extensive. But... But... 
He doesn't remember me anymore. Lawrence's eyes widened slightly when I revealed the cost of Aaron's protection. Amy. It's not that bad, though. Thanks for worrying about me, Lawrence. And my relationship grew. It's really nice to see people who still care. But I've got to go start my shift. I'll talk to you more later. See you later. During the summer, Amy works part-time from the morning to noon, from Monday to Friday, as a waitress in an ice cream parlor owned by an old friend of Gwenda's. She gets paid only with tips, usually around $5 each turn. Being kind to the customers will earn her more money, so depending on her mood, she can earn more. There are good and bad days, but in general, working will always lower her energy by a good amount and moral by a small amount. This energy can be restored in several ways. Some are drinking or eating, relaxing or taking a nap at home, and at the end of every day when you get to bed. There are other ways to gain both energy and morale, and also improve Amy's stats. But discovering them is part of the fun of playing the game. Now the workday will start and you'll see the results. In this first week, Amy goes bad. If this first week goes bad, don't worry. This is normal since Amy's morale is very low because of what just happened. Wasn't expecting this. I wasn't really in a good mood to be kind to the customers. Yeah! But I did an awesome job. At noon, your regular shift is over, but you can come here again and decide to do overtime if you have enough morale and energy until evening. You can also come here anytime to perform other actions, like talking with Lawrence, who works here full-time every day until evening, or get an ice cream for yourself. Remember, though, that doing overtime is a very stressful, stress, very stressing action, and if your morale is low, it's really a bad idea. I still feel weak. It'll be better if I get back home now. I don't think they will allow me to see Aaron yet anyway. When I got home after work, I found the house empty except for my cat, Nina. Nina and I went to my room, and I turned on the computer to check my email, mostly to see if there was any news from Aaron's family or the hospital. I knew it was rather unlikely to have more correspondence from them so soon, but I couldn't help but hold on to the hope that there was something new. I sat at my desk and looked around my inbox, scanning the titles and senders of the new and unread messages. I frowned when I saw there was nothing new from Eddie or anyone else from the hospital crew. Nothing good. Too bad. I decided to do some research on amnesia. It took a while before I found anything interesting, but after a bit of searching around, I found the following explanations about the basics of, it, of amnesia. Amnesia is a condition in which memory is disturbed or lost completely. People can forget about things they did, or they will simply fail to remember the things they were currently doing in the near future. I kept reading, but only got confused from the more complicated medical terms. I was distracted from my reading when a small notification box saying I had a new email popped up. I clicked it a bit absentmindedly since the address was unknown. Maybe I shouldn't have opened it. It could have been a virus or a spam. Nina hopped up onto my desk and meowed rather loudly. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to see what it is, right, Nina? I opened the email. 
eyeing the unknown address wearily. The message was simple and written in plain black text. Hey there, Amy. I hear you're quite the poet. I love to read more of your work, but you don't really share it with anyone, do you? I'm a big fan and your secret admirer, as the saying goes. Keep writing, girl. Uh, I shook my head slightly and clicked back to the inbox, deciding to ignore the unusual message. I was about to check my book review blog when the computer shut down. I tried to restart it several times, but nothing happened. My computer just had to break at, this, at a time like this. For a moment, I thought it might have been the virus from the mistress email. But then I realized that was silly. The computer wouldn't have even turned on, so the failure was clearly in the hardware. Nina, still sitting at my desk, gave me a puzzled look. Great. Now I won't be able to check my email or blog from home anymore. Aww. Ugh, my computer broke. I have to buy a new one. Why is this happening all of a sudden? I must go to sleep now. Tomorrow I have to work. Woohoo! Nina came to sleep near my feet, and her presence made me sleep peacefully. I need to hurry. My morning shift at the ice cream shop starts soon. Oh no. Hmm. I could do much better than this. Pretend you didn't see that. I want to go to the hospital today. I want to see Aaron. I miss him. So... There. Derp. I went to the hospital to go visit Aaron, but as soon as I entered the room, I had the feeling the visit wasn't going to go very well. Good morning, Aaron. Hi. How are you feeling today? A little better, thanks. He smiled at me politely, but without any of the tenderness I was used to seeing. An awkward silence settled in as soon as I sat down at the chair beside his bed. Lacking any other ideas to really get the conversation going, I decided to start with something simple. I didn't want to pressure him with anything that the medics wouldn't approve of me discussing with him. How's the hospital food around here? Is it okay? It's pretty good. Definitely better than I can cook. He, I'm glad you like it, but I'm sure you're not that bad of a cook. You've never had my cooking then. I went to say that I had, but quickly restrained. He wasn't a very good cook, but it made it more fun when he came to the ice cream parlor or when I cooked for him. By the way, I was wondering. Yes? Who are you? The question was so simple, so polite. So impersonal, but it still broke my heart. His words hurt, and I was certain my eyes betrayed a degree of sadness. I covered it with a small smile, hoping he didn't notice the momentary change. Oh, um, I'm a friend of yours. My name is Amy. Uh... Okay. I'm sorry. It's just that my memory is a little hazy. It's okay. I understand. Don't strain yourself. He returned my smile with a nod. You're a very nice girl, Amy. And my relationship. Thank you. No. If you excuse me, I'm getting tired. I better get some sleep. 
Sure, I'll come visit you again soon. You're on your own now. Use the map to move between the various locations and then click the icons. Explore the locations and get familiar with the different activities you can do. Will you manage to reunite with Aaron? Or will you fall in love with someone else? It's up to you. <clears throat> I'm just looking around. This is one of the most trendy place pubs in the whole town. All you can do here until sunset is have a quick snack. But after sunset is when it really comes to life. During the weekend you can attend live concerts and from Monday through Friday you can have a drink, dance, or eat some really good dishes. Unlike the expensive restaurant which requires elegant clothing, I can come here even in casual clothes. Now it's really refreshing. Yay! It's late. I need to go back home. I must sleep to. I must go to sleep now. Tomorrow I have to work. Oh no. And I had a terrible nightmare. I woke up all scared. I was getting ready to leave for the ice cream shop when the phone rang. Hello? Miss Fitch? Oh, yes. I'm. Well. I'm Marantha? Are you. Eddie? Yes. I need to talk to you about. Aaron. Is everything alright? Yes. Don't worry. Everything is okay. I heard you paid him a visit yesterday, and I'd like to talk to you about some things. We agreed to meet in his office in the afternoon. After my sh shift at the ice cream parlor ended. I need to hurry. My morning shift at the ice cream shop starts soon. Oh no. Hey, <sighs> I wasn't really feeling in the right mood to be kind to customers. This must be an off day. I quickly changed clothes and get ready to to go to work or go to the hospital to talk to Eddie. Hello. I wonder what he wants to talk about. As soon as I entered the hospital, I met with Eddie. He nodded at me and made a gesture to follow him into his office. I took a deep breath, vaguely registering the sound of the footsteps tapping their way through the corridor. Eddie led me to his office and he dis Distinctly noticed the occasional glances, but was too absor absorbed in my own frantic thoughts to care. We stepped through the door, and he quietly closed it behind me. Please, have a seat. I sunk into a cushioned chair in front of the desk and watched him carefully. Tell me how he can get better. Well, you have to understand that this condition is somewhat difficult to treat. Well, well, of course, be encouraging his memory to return by talking to his family and friends. Putting him in situations of previous memories, things like that. The therapist can tell you more about exactly what they'll be doing. There is also the possibility of prescribing him certain medicines, but we only keep that option open for extreme cases. I nodded, hanging on to every word. The key is that he regains his memory slowly and carefully. This sort of psychology is not my specialty, but we have to be careful of any psychological stress. Amnesia is tricky to begin with. 
We can't risk any more complications by trying to force him to remember. My heart sank. So what you're saying is, he won't be remembering me anytime soon? He looked at me kindly. Probably not. But there is a way you can help. How? Tell me, I'll do anything. Well, you know him very well. It would be a great help if you could think of situations that might help him regain some memories. Situations from the past. Places he's been, activities he's liked, things like that. I nodded my head slowly, trying to reconcile myself to all the unbelievable things that had happened recently. But the truth was difficult to accept, and as full, awful realization sank in, my tired mind and body couldn't bear it no longer. Tears formed unwittingly at the corners of my eyes, and they dripped down my face in revolts. Revolts? My sh shoulders began to shake, and I covered my face with my hands, trying desperately to muffle the sounds of lamination. Eddie hovered awkwardly, uncomfortable, and at a near total loss of what to do. Pulling himself together, he walked forward and knelt on the ground in front of me and rested his hands on my shoulders. Miss, call me Amy. Amy, it'll be all right. It's not a, that bad. Do you really think so? I know so. It's very encouraging that he didn't lose his entire memory, only that of the last few years. And even if it doesn't come back, you can always make new memories. I nodded at his words and smiled, wiping away tears. And I have, yeah. Thank you, Amy, Eddie. <laughs> now, excuse me, Miss Amy, but I have to go now. It is near sunset. Ah, the library is my favorite place to be. Here I can be borrowing new books to read at home, practice my writing skills, or during the weekends, I can attend creative writing courses in the evening. I can also use the library's computers to access the internet and update my personal blog, where I review books or check email. New books arrive every Monday and Friday, so I must make sure to come here on those days if I want to have the chance to get new books. Hmm... It was nice to reread this romance, even if I already knew how it ends. And I guess for now, we can stop right there. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!